Welcome to Best Kept Secrets Travel, episode 28. My name's Morgan. And my name's Will, and we are back with part two back. of our interview with Ben, our first ever interview on the Best Kept Secrets Travel podcast. And in this episode, I think Ben gives some of the best advice I've ever heard someone say when it comes to how you really push your comfort zone. Not in terms of just trying mm. crazy things like bungee jumping or skydiving, but actually more about the anxiety and the nerves of interacting with others. I think Ben's really good. Ben advice. broke that down to a T, and, and he best... said he was nervous. I thought I he got more confident. He, he got so much better, and also best kept secrets to do with sky scanner that I did not see coming. Did you see coming? <laughs> no, not no. at all. So let's listen. get to the interview. Roll, Roll the- Best friends and that's for life who stay traveling i'm talking worldwide 65 countries between the two every moment is so unbelievable sharing the best kept secrets about the trips and mistakes they made that they can't forget so tell me if you're ready for a time to remember as the gear up for the next adventure yeah. Woo. best kept secrets travel awesome we're back oh we can actually see you now so, so our next question is, have you ever been made to pay some sort of bribe? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a few times, actually. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Uganda was one of them. So, <laughs> which is like, I know that's not the, the, but in the country down or anything, but uh, it's a fantastic place. But, yeah, obviously, poor, poor countries like that, uh, there's a lot of bribery. Again, it kind of works upon that system. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, when I was, obviously we had a car, like a minibus kind of thing to drive around in. So, like, people would kind of, whilst just take turns to drive, and it was the group that I was with, we were all going home at different times, we were off taking different flights. Um, so we used to take turns to do ta- uh, airport runs. And uh, I had to yeah. take uh, a friend home to the, to, well, I had to take a friend to the airport and the security in the airport so you would like pull up and there was like uh boulders in the middle of the road that were like spread out so that you would have to like um they were like um spread out so that you'd have to like go around them and then there was police stopping people so they stop you pull you over and they made made every they would check your car you know and they made everybody get out the car they made all of the suitcases get out of the car. Um, they searched the car for any guns or anything like that. Um, and everything was good, obviously. He got back into the car. And I'm like, right, okay, can we leave? And he's like, the guy's like, you know, doing this with his hands. And he said, you know how it works here in Uganda, don't you? And I said, um, can, you, can, you, can you remind me? <laughs> And he said, you know, do this again. And uh, and I said, so you want, you, you know, do I need to pay you? And he said, yeah, yeah, of course. So I'm like, right, okay, just thinking that he wants like a little bit. So I'm like, right, okay, give him like, I don't know, however many shillings it is. Uh, and uh, he's like, no, 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 that's not enough. No, that's not enough. So I had to give him more. Uh, and he's like, no, no, that's still not enough. So I'm like, going, like, trying to negotiate, like, what is the limit that I have to pay here? <laughs> um, I don't want to go all out and just give him, like, a lump of cash. Because this happens all the time. Um, so, yeah, I ended up paying him just to get into the airport. Just to, <laughs> just to get, just to drop off my friend, I had to pay. To, to I mean, obviously, here in the UK, we have a machine for that. And it, and yeah. It, <laughs> This guy just goes straight into this guy's back pocket. And that's obviously how the, that, the wages are built up by a lot of bribes, you know? You just have to pay everybody. Everybody there, you just have to pay, you know? I, I'm, another time I was driving driving home, and uh, and I got pulled over by the police, just, just as a random stop check. Um, and the same thing, you know? You know how it works here in Uganda. And at that the point, I'm like, yeah, I do know how it works. How much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but if, if if you kind of just act as if you know the procedure, they kind of, no one, 
like you're savvy to it now. Like you're not just new. It's not like your first day. Uh, I I was there for like I think like four weeks at this point, so I kind of knew kind of how things. You know, sometimes you could say no, and sometimes you know you could get away with with not paying. Um, and other times, you know, it's like when it comes to the police, you know, you had to pay. There was. Um, did you was ever? Also... Sorry. Sorry, I was going to ask. Did you ever sit down after your trip to Uganda and work out how much your trip cost just based on a, uh, just based on your bribes? No, but I would have liked to have done that actually, just to, <laughs> to put aside like a contingency budget just for bribery. <laughs> But like if the Ugandan you're gonna... uh, tourist tax. Yeah, I was at a rugby game. It was a World Cup between U- Uganda and Kenya, and so we all just uh, the, the, like the guys I was with were like, right, let's go to this rugby game. So we got a ticket, um, hired some like uh, the, they're called Bodo taxis, and. They'd like a little motorbike, you know, that you can just jump on and they just take you to wherever. Um, so get on these taxis, go to this rugby game. And uh, there was like a, a stand of like random caps. There was a sheet on the floor and there was like random caps on the floor. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll buy myself a cap. Just, just you know, it was like the equivalent of like 50 pence. Just, just worth just to buy it just for the experience more than actually wanted the cap um so i'm at this at this rugby game with my cap on having a few beers enjoying myself and there was like this woven um typical like african uh central african like building like you know like you see like these safari huts with all the woven uh like thatched uh, roofs um and that was the vip section so anyone who was anyone <laughs> in Uganda is in this like VIP section, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. so I, we all want to get in there. So we went to the, like the entrance, there was some stairs to go up and I said to the, to the guy, um, like, can I come in? And, uh, he said, uh, do you, do you have like, is your name on the list? And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, right. Okay. Then I was like this, at this point, like I'm trying to bribe him. Um, <laughs> So I'm like, you know, so I give him like the equivalent of like 20 quid and he's like, right, okay, that's, uh, and I need your phone number. And I'm thinking, that's a bit strange. What does he want my phone number for? And he's like, all right, you're not allowed in unless you give us your phone number. So I'm thinking this is a bit strange. So, um, so I give him my phone number and like, I give him a fake phone number to begin with. And he's like, yeah, it's not working. It's not working. So so I ended up having to give him the the, the real. He he knew he, he does this all the time. Obviously, he actually went onto my WhatsApp under my WhatsApp profile, and it brings up your your actual phone phone number, and then he's like there yeah. like transferring it over, uh, uh, you know. And uh, so he has he has my number now, and he and he rings my <laughs> phone. So so you know there and then he's like right, I definitely have your number. Yeah, you can go in. So um, when I when I was so when I got it up in the VIP section, the owner of the rugby ground was actually a group. The owners were actually a group of five people from the UK um, no. that had that had moved out there like twenty years ago to to try and like find a sponsor like Ugandan rugby players to try and bring them over to the UK to try and find like this this like raw talent, and uh, they ended up moving out there and like getting married and you know they ended up buying this this rugby ground and they were like uh the chairman of of ugandan uh, uh rugby and when i was speaking to this guy he was i said that why did the i had to bribe my way up here why did the guy want my phone number and it's apparently like once you like a phone number for the for, for over there was like so valuable so they 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 spread your phone number around uh, like wildfire. So like, I immediately blocked this. Uh, like, didn't even immediately did it. I did it like after I spoke to this to the 
to the owner of the rugby club because this was like 10 minutes after uh, after giving him the phone number and I blocked it. And even even to this day now, I'm still getting like random text messages from Ugandan numbers. Like my phone number in the, within those 10 minutes must have just like got like <laughs> spread around like wildfire. <laughs> Maybe there was a WhatsApp group. How long ago shit. was this? This was like three years ago. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know if it's like a marketing thing or something, or like you know, but it, but it's like you know, oh it's goodness. obviously not like on a digital level. It's more so like I think for for scammers to try and you know to get at me, you know, maybe in the hope that I fall mm. for one of them. So mm. yeah, so you've spoken about a lot of the the bad things that have happened in uganda what were sort of your highlights throughout your trip there and how long were you there uh so i was there just under five weeks the one of the most amazing countries i've ever been to actually um yeah the the, the chaos of the city is just of kampala the, the capital is is in is everybody should experience that chaos it's just madness so um one of one of the things we did um was like we had like a day that we were just went into the into the uh, city center and we'd usually get these border bikes and get a taxi in but we thought we'd get like a real taxi uh which is like these minivans where they just cram in as many people as possible in this little minivan and there's no there's no logic to it at all like the driver doesn't communicate with anybody to say like who's getting out where, like to like put in order of who gets in the bus first. It's just everybody piles in, and then the next the next, someone you just tell them when you need to stop or you know because it's like one route from where where you are to the city centre, uh, and then it's like you stick your hand up and shout right let me out here, and then everybody has to get out of the bus. <laughs> But then somebody else jump in at that point as well. So it's just this constant chaotic <laughs> flow of people just and 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 I, I remember me, I'm like crouched up like this, like hanging out of the window. If it, if there was any sort of crash you you were screwed. <laughs> like completely. You you'd know where you're getting out. Um But yeah, we wanted to just experience how, how that how they you know, get by and uh and um spent a day eating like lo real local food in, in the city centre and just trying to basically live uh, um, for as cheap as possible that day um, rather than and buying like souvenirs and um, bartering and negotiating in these stalls and stuff like that. That was, that was a really highlight of the trip that day. Um, wow, that sounds fun. What made you choose to go to Uganda in the first place? So, my friend, who is, I met him at work, actually, kept on saying like you should come to Uganda. It's amazing. Like it's you know, he he is Ugandan. So, um, he 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 moved over here about I think fifteen years ago. He joined the British Army. So him and his friend, um, Clive, he joined the British Army, and then my other friend, who I met through him. He's also living in the UK, Derek. He um, he went to university, so they came over from Uganda mm -hmm. to, to the UK, um, and have both become a, really successful. So I met him at work, and uh, he said, "Yeah, he should come over." So me and my friend uh, June, who's um, is also like mad into traveling, he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Let, let's do it let's just organize it so the two of us well the three of us went over there he was over there already over there clive actually so we mm -hmm. we kind of split up the trip so i made sure that i i was always going to have to get a connecting flight so i kind of killed two birds with one stone so i got a the longest layover possible in dubai so my flight landed at one o'clock in the morning i think or 12 o'clock 12 o'clock i think and i was in the hotel in the in the airport by like half past like nearly one o'clock in the morning 
my flight wasn't until six o'clock the next day, uh, that day in the evening. So I got like four, five hours sleep in the hotel, woke up really early and just explored Dubai at like six o'clock in the morning when there was nobody there, um, which was, which is an experience on its own. Um, just to kind of get get a vibe for the city. Um, yeah, what so did you was, see in Dubai? Um, so I went to the mall, um, which was really, really weird because there was no one in there. It was so early in the morning, <laughs> but it was open. So all of these shops, like all these flash shops, like these Rolex shops and all these designer brands and all, you know, Dubai is the, the flashy flash. Um so it was just strange to just walk through with the the mall music on, but nobody there, and it's such a such a massive massive place. Um, that was that was that was, um, and I seen the um, the Burj Khalifa, so I, I I had to take a trip up to the top. Um, of course, yeah, and have a look, and just just for the view, yeah. Um, and I, and I, and at the time, my friend. Um, was working for she's a air hostess for Emirates, so she was living out there. So, um, so yeah, I went and had breakfast and stuff with her, and she showed us the bars that you could actually drink in. Obviously, like they're like <laughs> hidden away, and they don't like there's like American bar, one yeah. of these American bars that we can kind of drink in, um, out of. Um, I think if the, if it's a hotel, if the, if they have any sort of accommodation within the premises, you, technically you're allowed to drink. Because you're technically, mm. they can just say that you're a member of the hotel. Like it kind of works like that. But okay. yeah, kind of got off track there from from the kind of thing. But <laughs> and that's the yeah, you asked us how long I went went here, so I think it was about four four weeks, just in, just in mm -hmm. five weeks. Was it a, was it an expensive trip, excluding or including the bribes? Um, no. The flight was around about six hundred pound return. Um, so the flight itself wasn't too bad, um, and the accommodation was cheap. Like like for like four weeks, like a month stay it was like I think it was like four hundred four hundred pounds or something. It was like a hundred pound a month, a hundred pound a week. It was like you know. Oh, that's three, very good. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't it, everything's cheap you know you can live on you can live on pretty much anything nothing you know you could you could eat but if you go and, if you're going to drink and you're going to go to clubs and then you know and go to events and safaris and stuff like that it starts to get expensive did you see any animals whilst you're out there or yeah any safaris yeah so when when i um we did a safari trip to a place called Murchison Falls, and this like this game site is just huge. Like it takes a full day. It took it, it takes like ten hours just to drive around the whole the whole game park. It was the it, it, I remember at the time the we had a uh, we had a guy a guide who was telling us that it was the equivalent from. Uh, from traveling from London to Birmingham, um, like that was the distance, not not the diet, like the the diet, but the the, yeah. the distance of the the park. So it was absolutely huge. And the the best part about this park was it was not it was like it wasn't very touristic. So a lot of a lot of safari um, parks, the the animals are tracked. So like the lions, they have chips in them. So you can you could they can just go out and find a lion like no problem, and they're all managed like this is this is completely wild like you cannot step outside the the vehicle like at any time, because you just don't know if there's a, if there's a lion in the bush for you to jump. Um, but yeah, we, we so we set off, we set off one um, one like afternoon. I think we set off at like twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, we would get we to get there like it was like a six hour trip so. Uh, it was like the north of Uganda, right? It says the, the the park actually goes into Congo, so it's half in Congo, half in yeah. Uganda. Okay. Um, and um, 
so we went up and we we booked this the at this lodge and we stayed in these these tents with like uh, bunk beds and mosquito nets and in the morning was just the most beautiful thing looking out onto the onto the lake uh with like flamingos and like elephants and like there was this there was a stampede of elephants just there like to wake up to it was absolutely incredible um and we kind of we kind of just winged the whole the whole uh, trip because there was there was um we didn't actually have a tour guide so the people or the friends of uh, of my friend had advised just to turn up because it, it's not very touristic and you could always get a tour guide there's always somebody there to show you around so we went and we couldn't get a tour guide so we were going to have to take our own car that like I mentioned before like this people carrier we were going to drive that around this uh, the game site which was like I'm so glad we did it in the end because it just wouldn't have made it so what they did was the woman behind the counter was like right I'm going to make a phone call for you so she rang some local <coughs> so there was a town just outside the like the the uh, the park um so she should r- rang this this complete local guy uh random local guy and uh, and asked him if he would use his his vehicle and just show us around so this guy rocked up in the morning and this like i uh, like this land cruiser this jeep and uh I think his name was Albert or something. I can't remember his name. A little short fellow with like a, a flat cap, and he didn't really say much. And uh, we were drinking, and, and you know we had a crate of beers in the in the back, and uh, we were just the sun was out, just enjoying the just enjoying the trip. And uh, yeah, it was a full day. It was like a full eight hours of just like driving around, full full eight hours in the car just driving around looking at the the like the safari park so it was like uh there was like giraffes you know um uh, antelopes like um uh, wild pigs uh, you know that i didn't get to see lions um which was i was a bit devastated about um but <laughs> At the end of the day, you kind of knew it was authentic because they're, you know, they're they're not tracked. So you, you know, you, you either see them, see one or you don't. And sort of like halfway through the game park, is the River Nile. the The River Nile runs through the, through this game park, and the the Murchison Falls is part of the Nile. So we got on this on this boat trip. So you parked the car. And then you got on this boat, and it would take you up the river, and you would like. Um, it was just a fantastic experience, and there was like the um, there was like this famous lodge on the Nile where the, the Queen Elizabeth had, had stayed. Uh, it stayed in this in this lodge, and I remember this the the the, the guy the the guide was uh, was telling us about this lodge, and then this this crocodile like absolutely humongous must have been about like i don't know 10 feet in length uh just randomly came up past the boat like it was just it was huge and uh, and, I've, and i managed to get a good recording of it as well so unexpected and further up further up the um further up the river there was hippos that i mean the hippos was just absolutely enormous like like to see them in real life is just incredible. So, traveling up the the river, we get to this. There's like an island within the the river, and a rock, and you can see the 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 falls. Um, and 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 the I don't know how you describe it. Like the the backlash of the water from underneath it, and all the mist. The mist is like yeah. you, you can feel the power of this waterfall. It's 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 immense. So, you what you do is you get off the. There's like a little platform that you park the boat, and then you, there's like a little trail which is so picturesque. I think it's like, uh, like a mile, a mile hike up to the top of this uh, this hill. And when you get to the to the uh, 
to the waterfall. It's just the power. Like, if you if you were to ever fall in it, it was just, yeah. It, it's like, you know, like, if, if you ever see, like, the force of a dam, that, that, that that's, like, piercing through the damn wall. It's, it's like that, but, like, ten times. Like, the, the pressure is just insane. And there's, like, absolutely zero barriers or, like, signs or anything. Like, no, no, like, health and safety, no, like, fence or anything. You can literally walk right up to the cliff edge. Um, which, you know, I did, but it was, like, extremely, like, cautious. <laughs> so, Ben, one of the uh, biggest things we talk about on our podcast is trying to tell people how... Uh, how to save money whilst they're traveling and to learn from our mistakes. But one of our biggest questions we have for you is what is the most extreme thing you've personally done on your travels to save money? Um, Oh, that's a good one. It's probably taking a flight in, in the complete opposite direction and taking 10 times longer than what it what it needs to be just to get to a destination because to save because it was cheaper because I was at the time I was like uh, I was time rich and sort of cash poor so I had the time to take you know I had the time to just I like that yeah uh, so I would like I think I like I remember taking a flight. I needed to go to Amsterdam. Um, and I needed to go to Amsterdam. And the flight to Amsterdam was like, I think it was nearly like £350 to get to Amsterdam. And uh, and I was in a bit of a hurry, actually, because um, I'd actually, I was working over there at the time. And, uh, and um, I left my, my van. I had a camper van. And I left my, my my camper van in the airport, and I'd like paid a set amount of time, like I think it was like four days, um, and it was like X amount of I think it was like two hundred pound or something like this to to park to park the car, and then after if you went over that limit, it w- it was like the cost was like extreme, so I I really needed to get to get there, uh, and uh, and the so like. I could get on the flight the, the, um, for like 350 quid to get to to pay the charges but it was financially viable to pay the charges than it was to pay that the money for the, the the extortion of flight so I found a flight to Dublin for like 25 quid with Ryanair <laughs> so I went to Ryanair I went to Dublin booked a hotel for like 30 30 quid and had had a day had a day and night in 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 Dublin, and then I had another twenty five quid flight the next day back to Amsterdam. So I I I, I had it because I had the time to do oh it. My. I just paid I just paid the paid the the extra charges on the parking, and and had a and had a time uh, had a day in, in in Dublin for fifty quid or something, you know. <laughs> That's a lot of cost benefit analysis. That's quite I'm <laughs> yeah. quite impressed with that. That's quite good. Uh, what well, what what is some because obviously quite often it's quite expensive to try and get to the airport. What is a crazy way or ways you've tried to get to airports that have been weird? Um, yeah, so uh... There was there was a time where my friend, it, I was actually working in it. Um, it was a similar sort of time. I was I was still working in Amsterdam, and my friend, my friend's mum and dad, they, they had been on a, like a anniversary to Fort Ventura, and they booked like this five star hotel, and like it was kind of the the like chauffeured kind of holiday where the, the bags would get picked up for them at the airport and took and they would be in the room ready for them and and so forth and uh so that was part of the deal that their bags would, were ready in the room when they got to this hotel but the deal was 
that they had to take their own bags back with them. So it was only one way. So they had just assumed <laughs> that if they left them in the room, that they would get picked up and brought to the to the airport. Uh, and, and, and obviously that wasn't the case. So the bags got left in front of and they 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 got they they didn't even check like the I think they were at the airport and they were like where are the bags like to the taxi, and they were like oh well that's not that's not how this works so they had to get the flight, and then sort of just get gonna get them like uh, flown back to them, but the 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 so they were in argument with the hotel and the hotel was like well that's your responsibility because you didn't read the terms and conditions of the, 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 the package holiday. Um, and they desperately needed their bags. Um, so they said to my friend, their, their son, they were like, can you go out, can you go over and get the bags? And, you know, they'll pay for a hotel and they'll pay for his flight to go out there. So he was telling me this story and he's like, do you want to come for like one night? We'll just make one day of it. So I was like, yeah, sure. So I was at work <laughs> At this time, and, and and I was on a night shift, and he was wanting to go out in the morning, so I like finished my night shift, drove to um, uh, Amsterdam Airport, booked in the car park as, again, booked a flight, flew out to Fort Ventura. We got there in the morning, like seven o'clock. Um, went to the hotel, and remember going into the hotel, and it was like this five star like luxury hotel. And uh, it was all inclusive. So we went to the to the desk and said, like, oh, my friend's like, oh, my parents stayed here. Like, we've come to collect the bags and so forth. Like, um, like it's been a long trip and it's been so inconvenient for us. Like, um, like is there any sort of compensation that you, know, you can give us for a long long trip? And they were like, oh, well, you can, you can have a glass of champagne. Um, I said, sorry, it was like, you know, like 10 o'clock in the morning or something. <laughs> Um, and uh, so yeah we were there to pick up the bags and they they had to go and find the bags so like oh just take a seat in the lobby we'll be like 10-15 minutes max so I actually went to the desk I thought I'm going to get a little bit creative here and sort of <laughs> so I tell told the little porcupine and I was like um, I'm planning I said to this to the reception I said I'm planning on uh um, spending because it was like coming up to Valentine's Day. I was thinking in a week's time or something. I said I'm planning on spending like come, it's coming up Valentine's Day. I'm planning on uh, coming back and having like a romantic weekend. Uh, but I, I would like to have a look at the premises, kind of thing. Can I? Can I? Uh, can I like have a look around? And they were like, Yeah, yeah, no problem. So me and my friends were just like uh, me and friend Jack were just like, Okay, let's go have a have a look around. So. We took advantage of all the like the free. Uh, it was all inclusive, so we just took advantage of the free sort of bars and uh, had had some champagne uh, and enjoyed this this hotel for twenty minutes until they found the bags. Uh, so yeah, no, it was crazy. Uh, this is a, a this is a long winded story, but I'm getting to the, the to your to your answer. So we stayed in this in this. So it was only booked for one person. Um, so I actually had to sneak in, uh, into the ground, into this, uh, this hotel and, uh, I had to actually sneak in. So we went out, had some food, enjoyed the night in Fort Ventura and my flight wasn't until five o'clock the next day whilst my friends was at nine o'clock in, uh, nine o'clock in the morning. So he got a taxi with the bags, with his parents' bags and left. And I had the whole the whole day to kill, so I just thought, like, like I'll just walk to the airport. So I had to look to see how much how far it was, and it was ten mile away. And I was like, that's actually not that far. If I have like, I'll just stop off at a few bars, a few restaurants, like just eat something. So I just set off at like nine o'clock in the morning, and I think it took me like I don't know, like three four hours, and I just walk to the airport and I remember walking along the, the, the fence right next to the runway and the planes were literally just like so close to like to the to land and like it was I've got loads of videos of like the planes coming in but yeah just walked to the airport for 10 miles from, from where I was saying 
How long did that take you? I think it was like maybe four hours or something. Um, and I, and it was quite it was quite handy because I followed like the beach line, uh, this the, the seafront Ooh. all the way. But then I got to this point where it was like it ended, and I had to go like detour through these like towns. And I was like, at that point, I was getting the map up, like, I need to kind of figure out where I am here. <laughs> if I didn't have my phone, I was like, you know, I would have been kind of uh, knackered. Was it hot when you were walking back? Yeah, yeah, it was It was like 30 degrees. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you and have sufficient my... food and water? Yeah, so I had water, and I had my backpack, and my backpack was like, I don't know, like 20 kilos or something, because it was rammed full of, like, stuff. So, um, yeah, good wow, workout. That's, that's, yeah, quite impressive. So, I'm going to um, have to, what? sorry to interrupt, I'm, can, I, can I just quickly grab yeah, my good. laptop charger? I'm just going to, yeah, that's no right, worries. I'm going to charge. That'd be useful. Yeah, yeah, that's... I think this episode might have a little bit of editing. Mm. I'm not really prepared, am I? No worries. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> we were worse. <laughs> we were worse, yeah. Your laptop's actually not charging. But it doesn't matter. Right. We're all good again. So, seeing as you've travelled to... Uh, 37 countries so far which out of the ones you've traveled to do you think's the most underrated and why um the under most underrated um right it's a tough one um Probably, probably um, Italy. I would have said. I mean, Italy mm. has high expect. Like everyone knows, Italy has been this beautiful place with great food. Um, but the whole, like, I've been at quite a few places within Italy, and every single place is absolutely stunning. Like you know, you can go to like. You can go to like Switzerland, right? Where certain areas of Switzerland is absolutely gorgeous, but then other areas are, are just kind of mediocre and normal, like sort of like into the north. Or you know, if you go to Portugal, yeah, the, the, or, or something, you know, yeah, the the, um, the seaside sort of places are beautiful, but maybe the rest of it. But Italy, every single place, every everywhere in Italy is just absolutely gorgeous. And there's always there's always something that like there's there's always something to do or something to see something to try. I don't disagree with any of I, that. I think that's actually if I I've literally whilst you were saying that I was thinking there Good must point. be somewhere in Italy I haven't enjoyed and I can't think of somewhere. Yeah. Like every that's every part of that. Of point. Yeah. It's like, stunning. It, 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 yeah. Even the think, big cities, they're a bit like London. They have history. Yeah. And and, and for me, I am a huge, like, I, I love, like, the architecture in, 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 like, all the cities. And you can just go around and you just look at all these, like, tall buildings. and it, It's just phenomenal to even just walk, walk, just walking through the city. You don't even have to do anything. You don't have to spend any money. You don't have to do anything. Just walk around and look everywhere. It's just... Every it's just amazing, yeah. Do you have a favourite city? Uh Amsterdam, yeah. Amsterdam's always my favourite city. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you were like obviously you've been on a lot of trips and you always have to pack your bag, I assume you pack your own bag. Um what is one item that you could not go travel without? Uh and don't say your passport. 
<laughs> um, probably my headphones. In, in all honesty, because mm. when, like, when I'm traveling somewhere solo, I generally have the same script everywhere I go. So I'll literally fly to somewhere, or however I get there, and it's all. I always wing it. I always wing it, and the. The one thing that you can always do in every country is just walk around, and it doesn't cost anything. So I always just stick my headphones in, and I I like to associate a certain genre of music or a certain band to that trip to make it more memorable. If it, if you know what I mean. So like, mm-hmm. I remember I remember once I went to uh, to Budapest and I was. <laughs> insanely obsessed with the Kooks. So I just used to play their album on repeat uh, whilst just walked around and just, you know, I'm walking around anyways, I may as well listen to some music. So, yeah, probably my headphones. That's amazing. I've never really thought about listening to music in that way. I do quite, quite like that idea, actually. sounds like you do a fair bit of solo traveling and i think it's it's more interesting when you ask this question to more solo travelers do you believe that traveling is good and beneficial to your mental health and if so why do you think it helps you personally oh 100 percent. like it just it gives you it gives you a different perspective on life like um now at the age of 26 in comparison to when i was like younger like maybe i don't know 18 17 18 the the fre- the type of friends i have now they they are they are so different like the the there's so many different personalities that i just wouldn't even have associated myself to be to be like um not not so much friend, friends with but like well yeah because I didn't think that I would have the same interests as them. It it it's like it's opened up my perspective to like to be friends with like absolutely anybody and any character or any you know, I can always see something to to to, to relate to. Um I think that's that's been the biggest thing. And to get a get a different perspective on like how how other people live like how the lifestyles of of others like i was i was in switzerland and with with a friend of mine and he he actually met a guy when he was traveling in in indonesia um and they were both solo travelers and they become good friends and and uh, my friends from bristol and this this other guy uh mike is from switzerland and uh me and me and June at the time were, were over in Switzerland, and he said, "Oh, I've got a friend who lives in in Interlaken." So we went there. We were like, "Right, let's go visit him." So we went up to Interlaken, and this guy lives. It's not like uh, like you know, extremely um, rich or anything like that. Like he just has a rich sort of lifestyle because his house is a sort of a normal house and. It's on a lake, and he has a speedboat, you know, just to sort of that he's sort of built himself. Uh, and it, in in the summer, he, he spent he's spending these days uh, wakeboarding, having barbecues on the on the on the on the lake, and in 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 the winter he's snowboarding, and in the summer mountain biking. It's just like the the, the lifestyle, the the relaxed lifestyle that 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 they have. It just opens your eyes, like oh. That's a little bit. He lives a little bit differently to like how I live in Northumberland. You know, it's just a different. <laughs> uh, you, you, then you then you go somewhere North else. Northumberland is great. It is, yeah, but it's you know it just opens your eyes to not everywhere is Northumberland. <laughs> that is true. Not many places in Northumberland. Oh. No, <laughs> there's only it one. It does make me really happy. There is. It does make me really happy to hear all that because I as well travel very much and I agree with all of what you're saying with how it helps your mental health and how 
you meet weird characters that you don't think you could ever meet in your normal life. Yeah. Like you can only do it when you go out there and it's it's yeah. it's really amazing to hear and you hear all these very interesting and different perspectives from different people. So what would be the best travel advice you've heard or someone's told you? Um I'm on it before you ask that question I wanna I wanna add something because what I've just said before, um a little, a mm. little story. Um it doesn't I was in I was actually in Iceland with a friend, right? And I was in this hostel mm -hmm. and I met a guy, a Japanese guy, who didn't even speak a word of English. And we spent the entire day with this guy. Um and we've become friends with him and we talk on Instagram now and he doesn't even speak English. So it's just mad to be become friends with somebody that you don't even, there's no like level of communication. We had to use Google translate to, to speak with and going back to what we've seen before. Like it's just, it opens up your eyes and gives you a different perspective that like you can even be friends with somebody that doesn't even speak your language. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I thought that was a, a good little... No, that, no that, I really like that. That, <laughs> that is great, and it is true that at school you could never imagine making a connection with someone who doesn't even speak your language. Yeah. And then going out and travelling, it opens you up to all these different perspectives and those different ways that people communicate, and it allows you to actually make more friends and opens you up to so many different perspectives that makes you even even at our young age wiser yeah you um you asked the best uh, the best travel advice uh, in your last question before i interrupted <laughs> you um i think uh somebody somebody once introduced me into um into psych like psychology and, I, and I, i'm massively into psychology at the moment um and I've read tons of books about community, like, um, I, I'm, I, when I was younger, I used to be extremely difficult, like b bad communicator. I am, I'm trying to slowly get better, you know, um, mm -hmm. whether it be like public speaking or like, or what, whatever. Um, but I remember somebody recommended this book called, uh, how to talk to absolutely anybody. And in that book, um, I think I, I have it here somewhere. Ah, <laughs> uh, I've got a list of my... Ah, oh, here it is. Uh, this is it here. So, how to talk to absolutely anybody. Uh, Amazing. And uh, and in that book, it, one of the things it talks about is, um, is body language and how body language can open you up to so many more opportunities. So, there's an example in that book of if you're in an airport, right, and you... How, how, how many people have ever been in this situation where you're in an airport and you're lonely, you've been traveling for a while, so you just want to make some friends um, and you just want to speak to people. So when you're in a queue, for example, to the counter or any, it just, it just has to be in any queue. How awkward is it to turn around to somebody, do like a full 180 degree turn and then start speak, open up a conversation. It's, it's not it's, only uncomfortable. It's, it's a, it's like weird. So one of the things in this book was saying like to be, to open up your posture rather than, you know, if someone you're more likely to get spoken to when you're like open mm -hmm. than you are with your arms crossed. So every time I'm in an airport or every time I'm in a queue, I always stand sideways in the queue and I always look around like as if I'm like, like daydreaming and, and, sort of thing and I've found ever since I've done that people always seem to like talk to you rather than if you just stand and look in one direction then no one like you're, you're basically telling people don't speak to me I um, don't want to be spoken to or well, whilst you're stood to the side with your like arms open looking around like look making eye contact with everybody then you're 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 a conversation anyone can have with have with you, and and that that goes that goes um 
that 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 same applies to like in public. If you're in a, in a bar, you're in any sort of in in the street, in a train station, and it's those little things where you meet somebody in an airport, meet somebody in a train station, or you meet somebody in a hostel or something like that that makes you, the entirety of your trip just because you've mm. been an open person. You know, if you're a person that goes solo traveling and you have this attitude where your your arms are always crossed, your you know your head's down, you've got your your big headphones kind of thing on. You got a cap. You got when you wear it, even stuff like wearing a cap sort of thing. It's it's hiding your. So these are the things that this like this this book, for example, was was talking about, and and I think that's key to opening up opportunities when when traveling. Yeah, I mean, thinking back, I don't think it took us very long when we were at that bus stop before we started talking. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, it was a rather <laughs> strange situation. It was, yeah. I mean, I, my, I remember my... I lost my water bottle because <laughs> I gave it to the guy. Yeah. <laughs> that weird I remember... bloke. Yeah. I mean, Jack, the my friend that was with at the time, like mm-hmm. he's the most extrovert person you'll ever meet. Like he, he, you know, he could talk to absolutely anybody in any, you know, um, and uh, yeah. yeah, any 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 opportunity to to speak to somebody, like the, it's it. This is hard to describe, and I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do it properly, but. In a, in a situation, any situation, whether it be at a bus stop or any interaction with, there's always a gate. There's always something, whether uh, whether it be like observational or, um, you know, if you're wearing a t-shirt that says something, you know, you can talk to somebody. Or there's there's something happened, and you uh, like, for example, with us, like this guy was harassing that woman. That was our gateway mm-hmm. to that was our gateway to, to to start speaking with each other or it could have been it could have been a if it's travel related you know this is one of the things i used to do all the time just to make friends with people i knew exactly where i was going i knew exactly the ticket i knew exactly the route i'd already researched it and i didn't even need to ask the question but i could i'd ask the question anyways or oh, does this bus go to san marino or does this bus or does this train go to to Amsterdam, am I on the right? You know, and they would say, "Oh yeah, 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 you're right." And then, then once you've broken the ice, you can just talk your free reign to talk about whatever you, whatever you want. I'm pretty sure what either you or Jack did do that. Yeah, it was either can you pay cash or how do you buy a ticket? I think it was yeah, <laughs> but that, that so, I mean that was genuine. We just didn't know. <laughs> Sure, sure. I'm not sure yeah. I believe you now. <laughs> this guy looks nice. Let's talk to him. Let's pretend we don't have a ticket. <laughs> so, so after all your travels, where what is what is like your number one bucket list or your next place that you really want to explore? Um, the best. Uh, would be would be Asia. You know, mm. Thailand, Cambodia, somewhere like that. Um, so, traveling for me wasn't really a. It was never something that I ever really thought that I wasn't something. You know, when people, I don't know, go to university or something, and they think, "Oh, I'm going to do like a leap year," and and I really want to travel, and they they start they go to Asia or somewhere, they go to Australia, and then they get the bug for it. That was never the case for me. Um, when I was younger, I was just so fo- focused on work, um, and I got the opportunity to, to work in 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 Europe. My first ever sort of job, self-employed, was in Germany, and it came to me then. It was like I can just use the weekends to just travel. So like I was only like two yeah. hours away from Luxembourg, you know, and I had my car. Like one weekend, I'd go to. To, to Luxembourg and then the other weekend I'd go to like Mainz in, in France or I'd go to Holland or I'd go to Poland, Austria I, and I would just at this at that time it was like 
I was just racking up countries, and I was like in an experience. Yeah. So, um, most of my traveling's been within Europe, and I've, and it's always because I've always tied it in, because of obviously tra- traveling is like a big a big thing for traveling is is money, you know, um, in in, in supporting that. So, what I've kind of done is just tied it in with work. So use the time that I have off, and I'm kind of bored. Like, if I'm in, if I'm working in, like I said, like in Germany, like you go to Luxembourg, you go to the nearest place, and I even have that habit now. So, when we went in uh, San Marino, uh, I was actually working in in, in Ancona down on the coast, mm-hmm. and. As soon as I got there, I was like looking for the surrounding areas. Where can I go to? And San Marino was one of the places. Um, and so, I recommended Bologna as well. Yeah. So that was another thing. I ended up going to Bologna uh, from your recommendation. Uh, <laughs> so I've never really um, explored. Like I've been to, to, to Uganda, of course. I've been to, to like Mexico. Uh, but I've never... Um, sort of went out to to Asia and, and and explored. So what I would like to do is potentially um, get in a position where I'm like financially stable to enable to support me not having to work for like three four months and going out there and and fully enjoying the experience rather than struggling financially and have to do everything kind of on on a budget on on an extreme budget rather than. Mm-hmm. You know, get get more value for my money. Yeah. So, arguably, this is our last, but arguably our most important question, based on what our podcast is, is Ben. What is your best kept secret that you would give to anyone and everyone who wants to that little? golden gem that you tell this is what you need to do when you travel um sky scanner the best thing ever so um if you don't mind like for me in my situation that could be anywhere like like i said so if you're in a in a in say traveling and you're in i don't know budapest right and you've got three days there even though rather than you could just spend your three days and enjoy it. I can't help but looking on Skyscanner to see where I could go from Budapest within that within those three days, and is it cheap? Because if it's like three for thirty quid, I'm I'm off to somewhere else. Like I'm I'm getting another country in. I'm wanting another experience. And there's like a thing you can do on on uh, on on Skyscanner. You can like just click Budapest to everywhere. And then <laughs> highlight the twenty sixth and the twenty seventh of April or whatever, and then it'll come up with a list, and it could be like uh, Tbilisi or something in in, in Georgia. Georgia. Uh, it could be anywhere, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's I'm, I'm addicted. That that's my like uh, that's my thing. I'm addicted to Sky Scanner. At, when I'm at that's work, I will amazing. literally sit on. I will literally sit on Skyscanner and look at every Same. available option. So <laughs> if I'm in, in like close uh, to an airport, for example, I used to, to to spend a lot of time near Eindhoven in in the Netherlands. Yeah, and you you find that the smaller the airport, the cheaper the flights are, but the limited the fli- limited the flights are. So you can go. There might be like a flight path from like Eindhoven to some random place that you'd never thought you'd you'd go to uh and just go to it because it's cheap <laughs> so yeah that's i'm that's, so that's, impressed with this that is such a different style of traveling that is more extreme than i go yeah i'm really impressed with this that is i mean that was not what either of us i i didn't expect you to say that at all no. But I love it all the same and it's now 100% something that I'm going to have to try. Do you book those flights when you're actually there or beforehand? 
the uh, extra ones. So, yeah, so if I'm going to go to, like... <laughs> I'd usually try and uh, get a flight back as well, if I, if I need to be in that certain mm-hmm. place. Um, depends if I need to be back to that to that place. Um, last year, I, I took a trip from Amsterdam, and I was like, what countries have, have I not been to yet? So I was like, oh, I haven't been to Latvia. Uh. So I found a really cheap flight <laughs> to Latvia. Um, so I went to Riga, uh, mm-hmm. and it was like a Monday or something. So it wasn't really that, there wasn't much going on. It was a beautiful place, don't get us wrong. I explored it. And I actually had a, a flight going back from Riga. And I was like, again, on Skyscanner, where can I go from Riga? <laughs> For like tomorrow or tonight, and I, and I ended up finding a flight to Lithuania, which is the, obviously the neighbouring country. So I went to Vilnius, oh, uh, and uh, so I ended up uh, booking a flight to Vilnius and spending a day and a night in 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 Vilnius, and uh, and I didn't have anywhere to be, so I was like, right, okay, do do I stay or? You know. <laughs> and it was the same scenario. It was a Tuesday. You know, there wasn't much going on. Uh, so I was mm-hmm. to get, oh, go on Skyscanner. Where, where can I go from, from Vilnius? So found it, found a cheap flight to, to Vienna. Um, so I went to Vienna from, <laughs> and the, the flight was at like 11 o'clock at night as well. Um, <laughs> so it ended up like, yeah, just doing three countries in within three days and, uh, spending, spending, uh, Went to, went to Vienna and there was like uh, like a riverside bar kind of thing with a beach and it was a good vibe and <laughs> ended up just staying there and just having a having a great time and I thought I'm so glad I did this rather than staying in uh, Vilnius or staying in Riga yeah which you know are still beautiful countries but the, That's the experience and the That's vibe amazing. I was getting yeah I love that you know you know. Did you ever consider getting a bus instead of a flight? Yeah, so I have I have done that uh, a few times. So, um, my uh, an uncle of mine randomly just uh, his geography is terrible. So he was like, <laughs> he knew I was working in Europe, but he didn't know where. Yeah, and uh, he's like, wait, wait, where are you working at at the minute? So I said, oh, I'm in I'm in uh, Amsterdam, and. Uh, He's like, oh, um, why don't you try and uh, get a bus over to uh, to um, Slovakia in Bratislava? I was like, do you know how far that is? That's like, that's <laughs> ridiculous. Um, he's on a he was on a stag do. So I was like, I'll look at a flight. So I looked at a flight uh, to um, to Bratislava, but the airport is uh, the nearest airport for Bratislava is is in Vienna. So. I had to fly to Vienna and then I got a bus to to Slovakia. And uh and whilst this 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 was the Buddha trip Budapest trip that I did. So whilst I was in oh so I, I spent the weekend um, Are you even in Budapest? <laughs> <laughs> um so I was like in um on the stag uh, stag do that I these guys that I didn't even know, you know. And uh, they all they all flew back to the UK, and I was like, "Cool, I don't need to be back work for like another two days. Where can I go from from uh, Vienna?" And I was like, "Do I really want to get a bus back to Vienna um, to fly somewhere, or can I get somewhere on a bus from Slovakia?" So I looked on the map and I like zoomed out, and I was like, "Oh, Budapest is not that far. It's only like four hours away on the bus." So I looked at um, well, originally I looked at a train, but there, there wasn't any trains. And then I come across uh, this is the first time that I've done this actually. Uh, was a Flixbus, really, really cheap. Yep. It was like I love Flixbus. Yeah, yeah, it was like six, seven euros or something to go from uh, Bratislava to to Budapest. And the best part about it was everybody who was on the bus were like were doing the same as what I was doing. They were just traveling around Europe. That's amazing. 
So yeah, I thought it's always... clumped up countries in a way I just didn't think anyone did. <laughs> just hopping, it's like, oh yeah, I've just arrived here, really like it. I'll spend a little bit. Where can, where can I actually go just for tomorrow? Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> there was a, there I... was a time there was a time when I was in there. Um, it was a, again. I was this more mainly, like I said before, like with work, I always just take advantage of where I am and. So I was working in Switzerland, yeah. And mm-hmm. um, the job was terrible. Like they were building a uh, like a pharmaceutical lab for they were uh, coming up with a coronavirus uh, coronavirus uh, vaccine. Yeah. So it was so it was like, um, so it was so like fast paced and it was like such a rush and everything was like so unorganized and it was so um, like the guy like the bosses and stuff had the whips out. And it was just terrible. Like, uh, and I hated the job and I lasted a day and I was mm-hmm. like, I really don't want to be here. So I'm like, at this point, like, right. I was pretty annoyed. Well, I was like, to. yeah, I'm like, do I go home? Nah. So <laughs> I literally spent a week interrailing around Switzerland. Um, I went to every single city in Switzerland. Um, and just every day was a different day and a different hotel. And, one place I ended up spending two days there because it was just, yeah, met some friends and it was just really, really That's good. That's a long so, time for you. Yeah. So, yeah, I just have a look on Skyscanner or have a look on the train. No. That's another thing that uh, is, is the train line. I'm always looking on, on the train line. Like, I just look at the map. TripAdvisor, what's, what's nearby? There's a button on TripAdvisor, nearby attraction. Look mm-hmm. at that. All right, that comes up. Do a bit of research on it. Okay, can I get a train there? Right, yeah, let's go there. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. That That's a very, very, very good best kept secret. But actually in depth. When you first said Skyscanner, I was thinking, okay, where's this going to go? And then you just took it in a direction I didn't think you were going to start yeah. explaining. That That's... A solid story and probably the best way we could finish this interview yeah is yeah. a way that i didn't think it was gonna finish no our, our jaws dropped i was so i was like what three countries three days just yeah let's guys go let's go next one that's yeah. the last thing I and expected. it's the lack of planning as well yeah just makes it even I, more impressive i love that <laughs> i love it but that is amazing and Ben, thank you for thank you so much. coming on. And this is our first interview that we've done. We have definitely had a couple of technical issues. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to have to have you on again in the future to tell us yeah, some more of these yeah. stories because you clearly have a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, we definitely want to hear some more for sure. Yeah. Um, I'll be happy to share them. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, that's the, we, we can pretty much yeah. roll up there. Yeah, unless che- you want cheers. to say it, do you? No worries. No, just cheer. Yeah, thanks again for having us on. Thanks for. Uh, yeah, no, I remember you saying literally when we we're in San Marino, I want to come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because and one thing for me as well as as like public speaking, I'm trying to you know, um, the pressure or something on behind the camera or being interviewed or something like that. Um, I like to I like to listen to podcasts. I like to. Uh, I like to um, watch uh, as well, and and some people just have a, a real natural, uh, like knack to speaking, and, yeah. and it's so pleasant to, to to listen to, and I think that it's I think it's learned, like it is hundred uh, you know, percent it's learned, and I and I feel like I need to get better at that, so it's you know put myself in the deep end and it's always a good experience to learn as well yeah well and it's quite brave to come on something like this yeah. because it took us six or seven attempts at our first ever episode just sitting in front of the camera and talking is such a weird thing to do yeah and it's something you really have to get used to and we've still got a lot to learn but yeah we've definitely learned a lot and it's even actually talking through your stories out loud is something that we've improved at a lot just yeah. by having to do this and go through these experiences. 
Yeah. Which has been yeah. quite fun. 100%. I think it, it that's that's potentially a conversation that we could have potentially in the future because um, being able to not get sidetracked because as when as well when you when you're telling a story you you you're re, re, like replaying it in your mind and there's always a lot more detail in your yeah. brain than than what you, you can share as well and mm. you know there's always something that interlinks with that story or and it yeah i think to, to be become a great storyteller is to be able to, to only give across the point that you need to yeah. But also keeping the 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 suspense and the mm. everything with that comes with the story. And that's what we need to learn as interviewers is how to extract that information if it's not come across as we feel that it should have, which is yeah. quite hard to do. Yeah. Having better internet connection definitely helps. And I don't think there's much else we can say, but we look forward yeah. to interviewing again. Wow. What did you guys think about that best kept secret at the end? I can't I can't imagine that I mean the talking stuff the mental health aspect of pushing yourself out amazing. I got so excited when he said that cuz I couldn't agree more. I can't imagine country country jumping like Ben does. That is I do do that with buses I guess, but I don't go out there and then when I'm there think oh fancy going somewhere else and I then want looking another on country. sky scanner yeah. yeah but it's it's amazing and it shows you that even though we've done a lot you actually learn a lot more by hearing different perspectives from different people and how they do it's a different style of travel we've never we've, i don't think we've ever really spoken about it is the not the most cost effective way no definitely not it's cost effective how you can knock off more countries off your list but you won't get as much time there yeah that's really crazy and the way he spoke about yeah mental health at the end his tips where he wants to go next how, how did you guys think that our first interview went i can tell you from our side there was a lot of technical issues and a lot yeah a lot of learning both about travel and how to interview using a, a new software but, but I... we can't wait to do more interviews and really hope everyone out there enjoyed this one and make sure you share the secret with your family your friends your aunties your uncles your pets your enemies everyone because we want everyone to listen to our interview with ben and to listen to more of our podcast where we share best kept secrets and tips and tricks on how to save money roll the outro yeah let's make it happen i hope that you can handle uh, going on adventures best kept secret travels yeah all over the globe having fun you know the deal amazing secret locations hang out with morgan and will uh, educate and entertain haggle in the market uh, sharing their experiences time to get it started let's go